Welcome to the Thames Valley Cancer Alliance Health and Wellbeing Series. At the Cancer Alliance, we work with colleagues across the Thames Valley covering Buckinghamshire, Berkshire, Oxfordshire and parts of Wiltshire. Our sessions are developed and delivered by health and wellbeing professionals from NHS trusts and wider providers across the Thames Valley who work with people receiving treatment for cancer. Today I'm joined by Kerry Bucock, physiotherapist from Buckinghamshire Healthcare Trust, and Kerry's going to be talking today about progressing your current levels of activity, including details of smart goal setting and an overview of Maslow's hierarchy of needs theory, which can help you work out whether you're ready to start setting those goals. These sessions are for you. We want to bring you information that helps you to live with a cancer diagnosis. We hope these sessions are also helpful for friends and family who are supporting someone living with and beyond cancer. If you find this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to our channel so that we can bring you the latest in our health and wellbeing series. Kerry, over to you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Kerry Bucock. I'm the Macmillan Oncology Advanced Physiotherapist for Bucks Healthcare Trust. Um, and I'm here to talk to you today about self-progression um, and how to improve and increase your activity. So we'll talk a little bit about um, goal setting and how to set yourself goals, how to increase your activity and how to progress that activity. And importantly, how to recognise your achievements and reward yourself. So goal setting, and this is um, kind of what all physiotherapists base um, exercise on and, and working with patients. And um, so the goals are things that you want to achieve um, and it can be anything, it doesn't have to be physical, um, but there's the sorts of things that you want to achieve with your life. And they can be very personal and um, to each of us, very individual for people, and they can be short term or long term goals. But our motivation to achieve goals um, is affected by something called our own hierarchy of needs. So our hierarchy of needs theory, um, so if we're looking at the triangle on the left hand side. And um, so it's based, we're looking at the bottom part first, the physiological. And um, so before we can move up to the next step of the triangle, we need to have achieved everything in the physiological um, part first. So the physiological is things like our basic human functions for survival. So things like having enough water and um, warmth and um, sleep, air, uh, food and shelter. So if you've got all of those things, you can then move on to the next thing, which is safety. So this is our sense of security and having a safe home and environment and protecting our family and our loved ones a secure job um, and finances as well. So the next step is love and belonging. So this is having um, relationships, um, whether this is with friends or family, having intimacy um, and just having that sense of um, companionship as well. So then you start getting onto higher needs um, and this is more for people who um, Sometimes you find this more in business as well. So it's sense of achievement, so esteem, sense of achievement, that independence, having some responsibility and um, acceptance and res res respect within the community as well. And then the highest part of the triangle is self-actualization. So this is something where um, it's about your personal growth and development. And these um, goals are about being able to motivate others as well. So for us to get to goal setting, you need to make sure that you've achieved um, the most basic of all of these. So for example, if, if you can't afford to put food on the table, um, money is a bit of a worry for you, then you're not gonna be interested in learning a new skill such as a new language, for example. You've got other priorities going on with you at the moment, so it's about meeting our basic needs and a, a, an example of this would be um, a pay, somebody who's stuck on a desert island the first thing they would do is getting those basic life um, survival points there so finding food water and shelter we have to meet these basic needs first before we can start moving on to the next thing so thinking about that just think about your life um, is there any of these stages that you maybe need to address first before you start thinking about setting yourself some goals? So once we've addressed our hierarchy of needs and we can start looking at goal setting um, and the way that we look at goal setting is that they must be smart. So the S stands for specific. 
So this means that they must be really clear and focused. This is the who, what, where, when and why. The measurable is something that you can measure, whether that is with distance or a time frame, um, a duration, for example, um, how much or how many. And it gives you an indication of progress as well. A is for achievable. So it's got to be something that you can achieve. It can't be impossible, otherwise you just won't stick to it. And um, so it should be a challenge. Um, but just thinking about is it something someone else has achieved before um, and is it something that you can achieve for yourself? Is it realistic and is it relevant to your purpose as well? Are you able to commit to it and are you motivated to achieve it? And the final one, T, is timed. So it's within a time frame. So you're giving yourself a start date and an end date and it can give you a sense of urgency as well. So one of the most common goals that we hear um, always around New Year's when we're setting New Year resolutions is I want to lose weight. Um, it's not a smart goal. Um, it's very vague. There's no time frame there. So it's just thinking a little bit more detail about how to make it a smart goal. So I want to lose weight can be changed into on August the 1st, I will obtain a gym membership at my local community centre. In order to be healthier, I will work out four days a week and every week I will aim to lose one pound of body fat. By the end of August, I would have achieved my goal if I lose four pounds of fat over that course of month. So by then you're making it a lot more specific and you can give yourself a time frame as well. You've given yourself a duration to stick to for the exercise. And goals don't always have to be um, exercise related. They can be um, financially related. It can be emotionally related. So it might be that you say you want to do uh, more mindfulness exercises um, or maybe seeing your friends more. And um, it's just making it whatever your goals are at that time. So thinking about increasing your activity, um, so any activity is better than none at all. And think about your current physical status. So are you on any treatment at the moment? Are you struggling with things like pain or nausea or side effects of treatment? Have you got a lot of appointments going on at the moment? And um, have you got other commitments? Maybe you're looking after grandchildren. Um, just is have you got the commitment there? So you. Workshop two might be useful for you um, on activity whilst on treatment because it can teach you on how to adapt your exercise and um, during these these periods. The current NHS guidelines advise we do 150 to 300 minutes of moderate activity a week or 75 to 150 minutes of vigorous activity a week um, with two days or sessions of strengthening exercise as well. So I go into a bit more detail about this um, on the first session, um, but just to break it down. Um, so two and a half um, hours a week of moderate activity. If you were to break that down um, across five days a week, it's half an hour a day. And then if you were to break that down even further, it's 10 minutes three times a day. So by just breaking it down into smaller chunks, you can see how it's more re uh, realistic and achievable. So thinking about how to progress. So you've got to think about the type of activity you want to improve. So is it your strength? Is it your cardio? Um, is it your balance? Is it your flexibility? And there's several ways to progress exercise. So you could increase the duration. So this is the amount of time that you spend doing the activity. You can increase the intensity. So this is how hard you work. This is either with your heart rate, increasing your heart rate and um, increasing the weight or resistance that you're using. And um, you can increase the repetition. So this is the number of each exercise that you're doing. And the number of sets can be changed as well. And um, so you can incre increase the group of repetitions that you're doing or the number of sessions you're doing per week. So just some examples of this, um, I've broken it down into cardiovascular and strengthening. And so if we look at cardiovascular first, so you start off by doing a 10 minute walk. So by changing the duration, you might increase that to a 15 minute walk. 
to in change the intensity, you might start with a flat walk and then increase it to an inclined walk on a slight hill, for example. Repetitions, uh, you might just do it twice a week and then increase to three times a week. Sets, you may just do once a day and then increase to twice a day. So for strengthening, um, a similar um, kind of pattern. So you might start with some squats. You might do one minute of squats um, and just increase that to two minutes of squats. To change the intensity, you might do it not holding any weights and then by holding two light one kilogram weights. Um, and then with repetitions, you might do 10 squats, push it up to 15 squats. Number of sets, you might do two sets of 10 and then increase to three sets of 10. So just by making these very slight adjustments, you're making progression each time. So this is a nice little um, diagram of how to increase your walking. Um, so, for example, you might start um, with slow walking three to four times a week for about 15 to 30 minutes. You then um, start to build it up to moderate walking um, for a longer period of time. You then start to increase the intensity with brisk walking um, and for a longer period and start increasing the number of days per week as well. And then you reach this kind of period of maintaining. Um, and this is kind of over um, about the bottom is shown about 25 weeks. You can start to maintain your activity. So you can start to do things with walking as well, um, such as increasing the speed. So maybe if you're walking and listening to music, you might want to change your music to something a bit more upbeat to make you walk a little bit quicker. And you can also try things like putting on a rucksack and just adding some load or some weight can just make it a little bit more challenging for you. And you can change the type of walking. And um, so it might be a leisurely walk in the woods and um, to maybe going on to more hill walking um, or something like Nordic walking with the walking poles where you're using more muscle groups and that can really change the intensity. So for strengthening, um, it's thinking about um, the resistance and how to load up that muscle to build up tissue. So you would increase the number of repetitions that you're doing for a certain movement um, or the number of sets that you're doing. And you can change the equipment as well. So you might start with no weight at all. Just start with some bicep curls just with no weight. Then you could increasing it to holding a bottle of water. Um, you may then increase it further to holding a tin of beans. Just by changing the equipment that you're using um, just changes the load that you're putting on that muscle. And by changing your position as well. Um, so if you look at the pictures um, on this slide, you can see the chap on, sitting on the chair on the left hand side. So he's using the chair, holding on with both hands. He's quite stable there and lifting his leg just purely focusing on that leg movement. By then changing your position to put your hands across your chest, you're relying on your trunk muscles and your balance as well. So you're just changing the muscle group that you're using. And then by sitting on the ball, he's really having to focus on his balance and his muscle control to do that same movement. So just by thinking about the position that you're doing can just change the muscle groups that are being um, put under strain to exercise. So for balance, um, when we're working with balance, we're thinking about our muscle and our nerve memory. So this is something called proprioception. So when we stand on um, one leg, for example, you may feel that your ankle wavers and this is proprioception. So this is your ankle and knee joints just making adjustments to keep your balance. Um, and this is something that um, is very, very important um, for balance work. And the way that we challenge balance is by reducing our surface area. So you might start by doing some exercises, holding on to kitchen work surface, for example, with two hands. You then may increase by taking one hand off and then progressing to no hands at all. And it's also thinking about the sensory input. And um, so our balance relies a lot on what we see, what we hear and what we feel. 
Um, so by taking away our senses, it's challenging our balance even further. So if you were to then get to the stage where you can do those exercises quite comfortably with no hands, you may then want to take it even further and start doing them with your eyes closed because you're taking away that sensory input and really focusing on your body to, to work on your balance. To then progress balance even more, we're going to add movement into the mix. So by then taking our body out of our centre of gravity, we're then putting more demand on our muscles and our joints to keep our balance. So this is just how to progress and balance even further. Flexibility, um, so flexibility it does take quite a long time to increase our flexibility um, and it, it sometimes can, it can take months sometimes, um, but it, it's a lot of persistence and, and being very, very consistent with stretching. And it's really important that you hold a stretch for at least 20 seconds. And um, so any stretches that you'll do, make sure you feel, you get to that point, point where you feel the stretch and hold it for 20 seconds and then relax down. And trying to do that stretch at least five times holding each stretch for 20 seconds. So once you've achieved your goal, um, it's important that you maintain it as well, because the repetition and, and keeping going with that goal, um, we're getting that muscle memory. So for example, um, swimmers and divers, they will do an activity over and over again um, and, and their muscles then form a memory of how to do that activity. And it, and it becomes more ingrained in us the more that we repeat it. A good example of this is tennis players. They will practice serving over and over and over again. And then once they've perfected their serve, it's ingrained in them. Um, and that muscle memory is almost automatic for them. So if we, once we've achieved something and we can do an activity, it's important to keep maintaining it to keep that muscle memory there. And then when we get periods of inactivity um, or a flare up of symptoms or your commitments to things change, that muscle memory and neuroplasticity will slow down the wasting of muscles. And so the fitter that you are before treatment, the less deterioration and wasting you will get. So one of the most important things is recognising your achievements and rewarding yourself for it. And we're not great at saying things that we are good at, what we've achieved um, and accepting compliments. I mean, how many people have said to you, oh, I love that outfit. And you go, oh, this old thing, you know, oh, I've had this years. No one ever says, thank you. I like it too. It's about accepting compliments and saying what you're, you've done well, what you're good at. So a good way of doing this is think about something that you have achieved today. And I like to call this a positive of the day. And we do this in our office at work. At the end of the week, we do a positive of the week. And it's just nice to reflect back and think about what you've achieved and what you've done well. And sometimes it's nice to write this down. So you might like to write down little activities that you've done. Um, it doesn't have to be physical. Um, it could be a nice social event you've been to. Maybe you watch something that you enjoyed on TV. Um, maybe you had a nice catch up with a friend on the phone. Just these little things that gives you that time of reflection. And rewarding yourself for things you've achieved. So when you achieve those goals, make sure you reward yourself, whether it's a, a new book or a new outfit you've wanted going out to your favourite restaurant or seeing a film you've always wanted to see. Make sure you reward yourself. Pat yourself on the back for what you've done because it's hard work and your perseverance has paid off. So I hope that's given you some ideas on how to progress your goals that you want to achieve um, and, and increase what you want to, um, to do. And, and make sure that you reward yourself as well. Um, so thank you very much for your time today. Thank you very much, Kerry. It's been a real pleasure having you deliver your workshops for our health and wellbeing series. Thank you. And for those of you who haven't seen Kerry's other talks in the physiotherapy series, these are also available on our channel and we'll provide links to these talks in the description for this video. The other talks include activity while on treatment and fatigue management. So please do look at these talks for further advice. 
We'll also provide links to some of the Move More resources from Macmillan, which includes a video on exercise and the Move More booklet. Thank you for watching. Please leave your feedback in the comments. We'd love to hear your thoughts on the subjects you'd like us to bring you, as well as any questions that we can answer in future sessions. And we'd really like to know if you'd be interested in attending live online events. To find out more about the Thames Valley Cancer Alliance, please visit our website. Details are in the description for this video. You can join our mailing list and also find information on how you can get involved with the work that we do. Thank you again, and we look forward to bringing you more of the information you want to see.